So my knee totally just gave out and now I can't move my right hip because I subluxed it. If you don't know what subluxed means, sublux is um, to partially dislocate something. And it doesn't sound as bad as dislocating something, and it's not, but it's still rather painful. So I'm going to be laying here for a while. This happens a lot, and I have scars on my knees. Another, th another part of EDS is scarring and um, breaking the skin easier, and you bruise and scar easy. I remember I was in my anatomy and physiology class studying the skeletal system and my knee just gave out and I just com like really tore up the skin on my knee and I still have a scar from that. Well, scars are permanent so it will probably always be there. I have a scar on my foot from some stuff that's happened. I have scars on my arms. I'm just covered in them but it's no big deal because they aren't that noticeable so that's good. I guess I, I should be, I should consider myself lucky because I have friends with certain with different types of EDS that have it a lot worse than I do. Like I have one friend that came online and I believe she said that her shoulders and knees were completely dislocated and I just thought, oh my god, I can't imagine that happening. It's bad enough when I have one dislocator when I have several subluxed. It I just I can't imagine what it'd be like to have it like that all the time. And then there's type 4 of EDS, which can be deadly. It's the vascular type, where organs can rupture. So, I do consider myself a little lucky. There are days when I wish that I weren't like this. There are days when I really don't care if people have it worse than me, where the pain's so excruciating that I don't really care about anything else. It's just, and I know it sounds selfish, but after a while, you, you stop caring about everything else around you and for a while all you can concentrate on is being in pain. All you can do is curl up on the couch in a ball and not move for a few hours. But um, I think everyone with a chronic illness has those days. So I think I should just continue to realize how lucky I am and continue to lay here and be glad that I have a family that believes me and a family that takes good care of me. Not everybody has a family, not everyone with EDS has a family that believes them. But I'm lucky. I, not all my friends believe me and I think I've lost some very good friendships over my EDS and my fibromyalgia. I would like to say thank you to my boyfriend Matthew and my best friends Amanda and Allison for believing me and giving me the support that I need and for just plain being awesome. Well, I think this is the end of the video for what it's like to have EDS and fibromyalgia over break. Hopefully I can make a more interesting video when it's um, time to go back to school. I can show you what it's like to have to go down the elevator. I can show you what it's like to go from class to class. I can show you I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to you. Just trust me when I say it'll be more interesting. So, yep, that's the end. Hope you learned something. Don't know if you could have learned much from this since I'm home, alone, doing nothing. But sometimes even doing nothing can be very strenuous. Sometimes just waking up and being alive can be strenuous when you have a chronic illness. And I just want people to understand that. And I want people to realize that there are people out there like me who have it just as bad as I do or have it worse than I do that they're out there and even people that don't have it as bad as me that doesn't mean that they're not in pain and, and they're not suffering and that was the point of my video thanks bye thanks for watching